Yo, Bracey Skills Clinic's back with another video. Um, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Once again, I'm on my iPad. I'm driving, but I'm on my iPad, so I'm not holding nothing. As you can see, I'm focused on the road. Gotta make sure y'all know, because I am driving while I'm doing this video. But, uh, anyways, we're gonna get straight to the point, man. Um, today is a special day for many different reasons. Uh, first and foremost, it is my blood brother's birthday. Shout out Malcolm. Uh, his birthday is today. He just turned 24. Um, happy birthday to him. Happy birthday to our 16U coach, uh, Coach Brett. It's his birthday today as well. And the day just got a little bit more special within the past hour as uh, the guy that I've been talking about for the past year and a half, been calling him the most underrated. Um, he's put in crazy time in the lab, getting better. Uh, Mr. Will Heimbro has just committed officially to Seattle U. Um, he was on his official visit this weekend and he decided to commit uh, today, officially. So, man, happy for, I'm happy for Will, man. I think Seattle U is a great school. I think, you know, what's crazy is, you know, I was talking talking to my coaching staff about it. And, uh, and you know, we felt that all the schools that offered Will were, were great situations. I mean, you know, like you guys, like you guys know, he had four offers total, including Seattle. Uh, he also had offers from Pepperdine, Coach Romar, we know his track record. Uh, Cal Poly, Slow, San Luis Obispo, great campus, great school academically, solid program. Shout out Coach French and those guys over there. Um, and then he also was, you know, he also received the offer from American out in Washington, D.C. They're part of Patriot League. Oh, excuse me. So, you know, he had he had other offers for sure on the table. And I felt like if he would have picked any one of those, it would have all been great situations because because those are great schools and they're ran by great coaches and great environments. So I think Will was in a very, very unique situation where, you know, he, he wasn't going to make any wrong decision no matter what he did. But I really like Seattle um, just as a whole. You know, I think they're a program that's um, – they're definitely on a come up right now. And I like it because Will likes it, to be honest with you. I like it because he likes it. You know, I want to make sure that, you know, all my players are happy with whatever they decide to do. You know, my job is not to tell kids where to go. Um, I may give an opinion on it, but my job as the coach and the trainer is not to tell guys where to go. It is to give them factual information and I allow themselves as well as their family family members uh, make their own decisions. And, you know, like I said, Will was on a visit. I wasn't there. <laughs> so, you know, I can't, I can't really say like, oh, you know, I want him to go here, go there. No, I let the kids make their own decisions. I try to stay away from them going on visits or me going on visits with the kids. I, that's time where the kid and their families make those decisions and we support him, us as the staff, we we all support him. So, man, congrats to Will. Um, this is gonna be a little bit of a long video because I got a long drive. I'm, I'm driving to a secret location. I'm not gonna tell you where. I'm driving to a secret location. I'm about to work out one of my former players. You'll see the videos later. But uh, we got a little bit of time today. I got time today, okay? Um, I, I, will, I will say this, man. I will say this about just everything in the program and Will committing. You know, last year we had Myron commit to San Jose State. Um, Myron, you know, was definitely the poster boy of our program as far as hard work and staying dedicated and, you know, just doing things, taking the stairs when the elevators broke. You know what I'm saying? Myron is is the face of that for sure, and, he, and he's and he had a great freshman year at San Jose State, and to follow it up with a player like Will is really really crazy, like not like really really crazy. It's crazy because I'm gonna tell a story that some may know, most may not. I'm gonna tell a story. This story actually links 
Will Heimbro, who just signed to Seattle today, it links with him and Myron Amy, who's at San Jose State. So I will never forget this. This was actually during the pandemic. This was early 2021. During that, that weird calendar basketball season in California time where the high school season was taken off in the, in the spring um, 2021. So uh, we were still doing AAU in the spring because we didn't know some, I don't know if you guys remember in real time, but remember some counties were talking about having a season and some wasn't. So it was like, there was confusion on what was gonna happen. So we just, we just told ourselves, you know what? We're just gonna keep going and we'll play it by ear. You know, that's what us and the staff decided to do. We, we're still playing so i never forget it was a uh, march we took we took us we took our 17s down actually let me rewind it myron had actually completed he had actually completed a post-grad year he had completed a post-grad year and at the time he did not have no offers no division one offers at the time so when he got back to NorCal, you know, he asked, could he run with us? And of course, I'm like, yeah, for sure, you can run, no problem. But it wasn't something that I was like leaning on or banking on because he had just went prep. So I was hoping that Myron would already have something, but you know, with the pandemic and the way things were with the live periods last year, you know, he was, he was unsigned just like many, many others, right? So um, he gets back to NorCal and we, in his first tournament, he's with us, we're actually uh, playing at the Made Hoops event that they had at the time in Southern California out in Corona. So what's crazy is, what's crazy is one of the best games I've ever coached came in a loss because I was never more entertained as a coach than what I was watching Myron Amy go back and forth with JoJo Hunter out of Fresno, who's also a Fresno State commit. They're actually going to be playing against each other next year in the Mountain West. I'm literally watching Myron and JoJo trade buckets. They both had to have 30 plus each. I mean, it was like an incredible game. It was like watching two future pros go at it. You know what I'm saying? And it was it was crazy. Now stay with me, because I'm about to tie, I'm about to tie how it all links. I'm about to tie in how it all links to Will. Right? So uh we're in LA, the tournament ends, we're on our way back up to NorCal. You know, we drove, so we stopped at Roscoe's to get something to eat. I'll never forget this. Uh shout out Alex Miazga, Alex Miazga, who just committed to Lane community college juco up in oregon shout out alex so alex comes up to me and says coach man i got this kid that wants to play for us i'm like okay i'm like what's his name he's like oh will Heinbro. you know didn't ring a bell because i didn't know who the kid was at the time and so he says uh yeah the kid is pretty good man he's like six seven i'm like really you know at the time we didn't really have a lot of height so of course six seven i gotta take a look at that so he shows me clips and I just see this video of him going down the middle and just slamming on somebody like ridiculous, ridiculous hard down the lane. I'm like, oh my goodness, and he's six seven. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, man, he's trying to he's trying to come out, he's trying to play for us. Mind you, we were supposed to go to Atlanta like two weeks after that, I believe, somewhere around that time. So um, I tell Alex, I'm like, man, tell him to come to practice, man. Just tell him to come to practice. We're gonna be practicing in Hayward. And he can come practice. So whatever. I leave it alone. Friday comes. That Friday comes. We have practice. Sure enough, he walks in, I believe, with Alex. I believe. I believe they came together. Somebody fact check that. Alex or Will, if y'all watching, fact check that. I believe they came together. But mind you, during this time, Myron had no D1 offers. Myron was like still in the grind trying to get offer number one. Like there were even discussions about him going to a national JC. This was like, I'm telling y'all, man, like this was really out the mud, bro. So um, I get to practice myself and director Antonio. We, we walk in the gym and, you know, the kids there, he introduces himself. We introduce ourselves. He's a legit six, seven. He's long. I'm like, okay, man, Coach Bracey introduced himself. I'm like, okay, cool. We're going to see what it do. I'm getting excited because he's longer than everybody that we have on our team currently at the time. So he comes, he comes, he, he takes his clothes off, he, you know, gets dressed, all that type of stuff, right? So I was like, you know what? I need to see what this kid got. Let me, let me just do the most basic fundamental drills 
and see how his handle is, see how he shoots the ball, do some conditioning drills, see how he runs up and down the court. I'm, I'm, I'm practicing the team, but I'm really testing him to see how good he is, right? So we're doing the conditioning drills. He's running great. He's in great shape. We're doing the ball handling drills. He's doing the ball handling drills pretty good. I'm like, okay, this dude, I don't think he's a post player. He's, he's more on the wing side. He's shown that he can handle it. And his jump shot doesn't look bad. He's athletic. When I tell you, when we started scrimmaging, and I saw Myron and Will out there on the court together. I can't remember if they was on the same team or not, but I just know they were on the court at the same time. Whether it was on this, whether it was on the same team or competing against each other, they were on the court at the same time. And I remember looking at Coach Antonio within the first five minutes after I seen some of the stuff Will was doing on top of Myron and on top of all the other phenomenal players who are also college basketball players right now. I looked at I looked at Coach Antonio and said, uh, we might have a shoe deal caliber team. And he looked at me and he agreed. And he was sold on Will. Because he was actually able to kind of focus on Will more than anybody else, more than I was, because I'm coaching the team. He's kind of sitting back observing. So he was the one I was like, man, that, that kid's tough, man. Like, we, we, we just picked up a good one. I, I remember him saying that. We just picked up a good one. I'm like, man, I'm seeing it. But, you know, he's, like, looking at Will, like, everything he's doing. He's like, nah, man, we, we got something, man. We got something. And I remember he said, man, you should see if he's able to go to Atlanta. Right? Now, if you remember, those has really been a super following, you know, who's been really following my page for a long time. We went to Atlanta uh, almost two years ago. And we went undefeated out there. We did really, really well. It was still during the pandemic, so a lot of the D1 coaches couldn't watch, but we had some D2s looking, and it was a great, great trip. It was one of the best trips of all time, I believe. But what's crazy is Will didn't even go. So Will was – we were actually trying to get Will to go to Atlanta on that trip, but this was during the pandemic. So I don't know if y'all remember, when you get the, the jab, right – no, I don't want my channel being censored, so I got to use code words. When you get the jab for that, that C19, right? Remember, you had to wait, I believe it was like two weeks in between the jabs. But if you leave, if you get the first jab and you leave the state, you got to start all over. So the time I asked Will to go to Atlanta, he had just gotten his first jab. So he couldn't leave the state. So he couldn't go to Atlanta. <laughs> so I'm like, dang, man. But see, I didn't really trip too hard on it because we went out there and we did so well. I'm just thinking, okay, well, you know what? We're going to Phoenix the next week. Let me see if he's able to go to Phoenix, right? This is the trip where Myron actually got his offer from, from San Jose State. He actually got his offer from this Phoenix trip. So he went out there and he was scoring 40 points, 30 points. He was doing, he was playing phenomenal. And we had to actually pull up, um, we actually had to pull up some 15U kids because the high school season had just started, which meant Will couldn't go to Phoenix either. So Will was unable to go to Phoenix because the high school season had just started. And he was, you know, just got his second jab for the C19. And he couldn't even go to Phoenix with it. So long story short, Myron had to go out there with a bunch of 15U kids. And that's why he was able to put the numbers up that he was able to put up. But I'm saying all this to say, twice, we almost saw Will and Myron on the same team. Twice, we almost had Will. And Will Will's been with us that long, believe it or not. He's been with us that long. He came right at the Taylor end of our pandemic season. As far as the, uh, as far as like early 2021, before the high school season started. He came at the very, very end of that. And we almost got him to play with Myron. But as you guys know, after the Phoenix trip on the way back, Myron got his San Jose State offer. So he got his offer to San Jose State, and of course that was over because he was done. So we never got a chance to see Will and Myron actually on the same team, but we were very, 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 very close. And we actually did get to see those guys practice together. So I know this is a long video, a longer video, but I'm saying this to say like these two guys, Will and Myron, little did I know coming into the pandemic, I did not know that these two guys would literally change the, uh, the how everything goes for our program. Um, I just remember Will, I mean, Will and Myron, one thing those two guys 
have in common is like they, they, they stayed even killed throughout the whole recruiting process, man. I mean, they kept believing, they kept working on their games. When things didn't necessarily go their way early in the recruiting process, all they did was continue to get better. And sometimes, man, with the recruit, especially during the pandemic, um, it's a lot of patience when it comes to recruiting. It's a lot of patience when it comes to recruiting. I think a lot of kids and parents see other players get offers and they see all these uh, AAU programs talk about these kids that are, you know, getting off or whatever. But they think and they look at those things and they think that it's just something that just happens and it doesn't. It's it's a long, long process. And I hate to to break some of y'all spirits, but some of these offers are not legit. Some of these people that get these offers are just fluff to build more attention for the program or try and create more of a buzz for somebody else to really officially offer. Like a lot of these offers don't even be legit. A lot of these offers do not even be committable. So th that's why I try not to really get caught up in the social media things on who's hot, the rankings, because it's, it's, it, it can be toxic. It, it can become toxic when you really get caught into that type of stuff. Because what happens is you start, you forget about reality, meaning that you forget that the main, the main thing that's going to get you a scholarship outside of character and academics is the development of your overall game. And I think some people and parents make the mistake of thinking about all platform and don't think anything about player development. One thing Will and Myron were big on were player development during their time with us. They still are. They still work out. If, and trust me, Myron, those who's been wondering about the Myron workout videos, the only reason why Myron has not been training this summer is because he had surgery on an ankle where he's literally playing with torn ligaments in his ankle. So he's been recovering from that. He's starting to do some stationary stuff. He's recovering pretty well. But had Myron been 100% this summer, you would have saw plenty of videos. He'd be outside with us. So those guys, they get the the importance of getting better daily. And yes, they had to play on the platform. Yes, they, you know, calls had to be made. Somebody had to vouch for them. Yes, all that's true. But they still had to perform when whoever were interested were watching. And they did that. And, you know, I just, I just hope that whoever's watching this video from our program understands that Bro, everything is not going to happen on your terms. That's life. That's life. Everything is not going to happen on your terms, good or bad. One thing that, that does happen on your terms is how you choose to approach the day every day and how, and how, how hard you go with controlling the things that you can control. That's one thing that you can do. Everything outside of that, it's not on your terms, bro. It's not on your terms. And a lot of people fall off because they think stuff is supposed to happen on their terms. Let me be very, very clear. We have a lot of talented players that play with Myron and Will that are not Division One players right now, but I believe we'll have the opportunity to be Division One players after they finish their two years at JC's. So we go back to everything not happening on your terms. It may take you to do two years out of JC for it to happen. Everything's not going to happen on your terms. Also, everybody's path is not different. So everybody's not going to be a D1 player. You know, I, I don't know if y'all remember this, but I said this a while ago during the pandemic. I said that there was going to be a lot of crazy, crazy stories from players who are not pros yet but will be pros within the next probably three to five years it's going to be so many crazy stories on these kids that had to go jc to d1 d2 d1 uh jc to d2 and then made a pro team like you're going to see so many stories on 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 kids that had to go all kind of different routes to get to their end destination goal and some of that is going to be due to the pandemic. Most of it's probably going to be due, due to the pandemic. And then some of it is just going to be, hey, man, late bloomer. It's just, it's just timing. Like, I just wish that the basketball world kept it more truthful with our kids and our, and our parents. These parents spend so much money going to these tournaments, 
driving up and down these freeways, jumping on flights, paying for hotels. We know how crazy the admission is to get in the game. Then we're talking about paying for parking and do not come in there with a family of four plus. This thing is very, very expensive. I personally feel like as an AAU director and as a basketball skills trainer, that it is our duty to keep it real with the parents because they're getting scammed out, money, out of money every time they step out for a tournament. And there's no offense to no tournament director. I'm just being honest. The expenses in this game is crazy. So the very least that we can do is be truthful to these parents and make sure that we're providing the right information. And if we ourselves can't provide that information, we got to have somebody else that can. I think every parent that's involved with AAU, whether they're a difficult parent or, or, or the best parent, they are all owed the truth. And I think a lot of, I think what's wrong with youth sports as a whole, in particular AAU basketball, is too many people that are in this business as adults that are not being truthful with these parents and kids and it's leading to these parents. It's, it's, what they're not realizing is it's breaking up households, bro. I've seen households be broken up over over youth basketball, whether it's the kid not getting on with the parent no more, whether the kid is depressed because they thought everything was supposed to happen because of what a trainer said or what an AAU coach said. You know, like, I, I've seen this happen over and over, and I just shake my head because I'm like, wow, man, like, who wasn't truthful to somebody? And can you really blame the kid for being a bougie hooper when they've been getting fed poison? and toxic information all their lives. So not to go off topic, but I'm just saying this to say, Will and Myron stay true to the game. They stay true to themselves. Also, shoe deals came after both. Shoe deal teams came after both. Shoe deal teams came after Myron. <laughs> Literally, I will never forget this. We were leaving Arizona on a on a nine hour drive, and Myron is sitting in the front seat, right next to me, when these shoe deal teams were hitting him up. Will had shoe deal teams hit him up two days before we were leaving to go to a live period. Shoe deal teams hit them up, okay. And guess what? Am I mad at those shoe deal teams for hitting them up? No, I'm not. They're talented players. Will and Myron are phenomenal. I'm not mad at the shoe deal teams for hitting them up. Not at all. You know why? Because they're doing what they're supposed to do. That's their job, right? But this is the thing. When you talk about character of the kid and upbringing, those two understood that everything that they needed was right here. No, we're, we, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I know everything, but... In their minds and in their hearts, they felt everything they needed was right here. They didn't need to make no move. They didn't need to go to a, a, a shoe deal team to get the look that they wanted. And there's no knock to the shoe deals. I, I got respect for, I got a lot of, people think that everybody's like, like we're just in so competition or anti-shoe deal. I have friends that coach on circuits. <laughs> I have friends that coach on circuits that I, that I talk to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, there's no... There's, there's no ill will towards any shoe deal team. You know what I'm saying? The kids still got to make their decision. And I just wish that more kids were like Will and Martin. I wish more kids believed in their own ability. I wish more kids understood that you got to listen to somebody. I'm, I wish more parents understood that it's not about being the loudest in the stands all the time. You know what's crazy about Will and Myron's parents? They never got in the way of their child's game. When you go to when I coach Will and Myron, I don't even I forget that they're even at the game. They're not calling Will's name and Myron's name in the game, saying, "Hey man, you gotta do this. Hey man, you gotta do this. Hey, you should shot that. Hey, you should." They're not doing none of that. They just sit back and let their child play. They let the coaches coach. They let the trainers train, and they let the kids be kids and play in the game. They never got in the way of coaching. They never said, man, I don't agree with that move or I didn't do. Like, yes, it's cool to have an opinion. I'm pretty sure they had opinions on certain things. But what I'm saying is they never allowed their own personal feelings or beliefs for whatever they felt, even if they agreed with it, get in the way of the play of their child. I really wish more parents was like that. I really, I really, really wish more parents was like that because parents got to see that that's really 
that's really what helps a kid flourish. You're the parent. They already got to hear you tell them, hey, clean your room up. <laughs> they got to hear you. They got to hear you tell them, hey, can you take the garbage out? They already got to hear that. <laughs> they don't want to, like I, I tell I tell people this all the time, bro. These kids, believe it or not, use this game as therapy. They use it as therapy, man. This is a crazy world we're living in right now. Being a 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year old kid is a lot different than even when I was a kid. And I'm not that much. I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not that old. Okay, I'm not that old. But even if if I can say that it's different from when I was in high school, just imagine how much different it is for somebody that may be older than me. These kids are going through a lot, bro. They're using this game as therapy. So just imagine you in a therapy session. And you talking to your therapist and you got somebody knocking on your door say, hey, man, you should have told him about such and such and such and such. Hey, man, you should have told you should have told the therapist about how this person did this and this. this, 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 this. Well, it's not even therapy no more. So your one your one escape, which is therapy, they got to hear you tell them what to do every play, every time down the court. Not one time did Myron and Will did not one time did their parents do that. Not one time. I'm not saying you don't get routed up. I'm not saying you can't cheer for your child. I'm not saying that you can't say, oh, ref, that's a terrible call. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is they're not coaching from the sidelines. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. They're not coaching from the sidelines. So th th these two won't be the last. I don't believe they'll be the last D1 players in our program. I don't believe that. But these two are definitely the models. These two are the, the qualities and characteristics of these two kids, Myron and Will, are the characteristics that I'm looking for in a player when I'm trying to bring in a new player into our program. And they're also the players that I'm trying to develop. The current, the current players in our program, I want them to develop the same characteristics. They're not going to be the same person. We know that. But characteristics on how to handle certain situations and how to approach things got to be similar to Myron and Will because that's the blueprint. They've created a blueprint for our program and I'm forever thankful for them because as much as you know they tell me thank you for everything I've done for them, they don't understand how much they've done not just for myself but every single kid under and after them. This is bigger than just me. This is bigger than just Rampage. They've They've impacted a whole culture of kids, bro. And I want I want them to understand that. I want their family family members to understand that, that they've set a standard. And it's to the point where if anybody's not with that standard, they got they, they probably gotta be removed from the situation because we can't take nothing less. We can't take nothing less from a, from a character standpoint. We can't take nothing less from being coachable standpoint. We can't take nothing less because they've set the standard. They've set the standard. So I'm just I'm just I'm just happy today because it wasn't easy. I just remember I just remember like trying to really plead my case on why I felt Will was a division one player. And some people listened, some people didn't. Most actually didn't listen. But you know, it is what it is. I mean I think Will had to do his job of proving himself just like Myron did the year before, and they both done that. They 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 did it. They've done it and they did it. Um Another thing I want to touch upon real quick is, man, we can't forget about my dog, Leroy Bryant, man. I went to his game. Shout out Leroy Bryant, man. He's another Division One player that played with us, but he's in a different sport. He's a, a University of Washington commit. He play, He's going to be playing corner uh, for the Dubs, U-Dub. And um, he's going to be in the same city as Will. Class of 23. He's going to be in Seattle. So, I'm going to be doing a lot of flights back and forth to Seattle, man. That's going to be fun. I'm going to be at the first game. I'm going to be at his first game with the University of Washington. And I'm going to train Will while I'm up there. And then I'm going to be at Will's first game. I just I just picture how that's going to go already, man. So shout out Leroy. He's another kid, high character kid, man. He's been through a lot in his life, man. I'm a huge fan of not just him, the athlete, or him being a Rampage player. I'm just a fan of him just being a just being a, a soldier, man. Just being a soldier, man. So we got some good kids coming out of our camp, man. It's, it's once again, it's a great time to be a Rampage player. Um, like I said, I don't think Will and Myron will be our last D1 kids. I'm hoping we got some other ones coming pretty soon, hopefully. But uh, as of today, shout out Will, man. Shout out Will. I think you're going to do 
well up there. And, man, we still got some work to do. He still got to do a year at SC Academy, too, by the way. So he won't be playing for Seattle this upcoming year. It'll be the fall slash winter of 2023. So he's going to do a post-grad year at SC Academy. Shout out Coach Julius, and Sully, and Chaney, all those guys down there at SC Academy. I'm going to be up and down this I-5 like crazy, man going down there to watch some games and even a couple practices or whatever so you'll be seeing you'll be seeing the process man but today he committed and we're thrilled and that's my video today make sure you guys like comment subscribe man i know it's a long one but if you care about your future and want to hear some useful insights hopefully you've made it this far in the video because i think everything that i talked about needs to be learned as a lesson but i'm going to get to my workout i'm almost there once again, like, comment, subscribe. We out.